And that sort of leads to the other question that I kind of wondered about it, the the invalid corps, the veterans in or yeah, the veterans reserve corps. Right. We have it by 1863. And mm -hmm. at the same time, you already mentioned that this is the moment when you get the USCT coming into existence, when we get groups like the 54th Massachusetts. So we're going to start seeing African-American casualties. Yes. What about them? Did they also go into this Veteran Reserve Corps? Or was it that once they got injured and survived the hospital, because medical care, from what I gather, is not on par for African-American soldiers? Right. Were they just discharged at that yeah. point? Um, that's a great question. And it's a question that I think, I hope someone does this, does this project. I, I'm not sure it will be me, but I have to, I, there are so many things that came out of this and I'm like, oh, there's, we need more on this, right? Um, well, that's, that's what makes a good book. <laughs> yeah. Um, there, there, African-American soldiers were not allowed into the Invalid Corps. Hmm. Um, the Invalid Corps was entirely white. Um, and there was an attempt at one point, there was a proposal anyway, mm -hmm. to make a kind of corollary unit that was an Invalid Corps, but for black soldiers. Hmm. Now, the problem with that was um, not so much that it would have wouldn't have been useful because it would have been in the same way that the invalid corps, you know, the the labor that you could have gotten out of it, right? But more, it, it the problem was more um, linked to ideas about black bodies, mm -hmm. and black bodies were already perceived as inferior to white bodies, and so if you took a black body. Um, regardless of, you know, putting the blue uniform on them and, and their kind of new status as, as mm -hmm. soldiers, right? That could only do so much. They still were not kind of physically the same as white soldiers in the minds of surgeons. I mean, this was very common medical theory, right? Was that black bodies were more prone to sickness. They were more prone to injury. Um, and part of this comes from the institution of slavery where disability and blackness are very much linked because the most visible disabled bodies in the 19th century world were black bodies, right? Because of the brutality of slavery. And so there was, if there was some concern about whether disabled white men could be useful after they were disabled, then there was serious concern about black bodies being useful. And so that proposal to create a, a segregated black invalid corps didn't go any further. It was kind of bandied about and they were like, nah, it's, it's, not, it's never gonna be big enough. Or not, it's not, they're not gonna be capable of as much stuff. Um, and then one of the other things that I found really fascinating, and I really relied on the work of Kelly Mazurik here um, on black prison guards was that there was a complete disconnect between the way that various different forms of labor were understood as kind of appropriate to different groups. So for mm -hmm. instance, for black soldiers to be prison guards, they often had to be some of the best black soldiers. That was something that they, it was almost like a, a mark of honor, right? Mm -hmm. That they were so good, they were so trustworthy Right. They were so capable that they could be entrusted with prison guard duty, right? But disabled white men, men who are literally being called sort of invalid, right, right. are also capable of this. So they're on two different complete you know, levels, right? Yeah. So if these guys are so, <laughs> they're so good, they've gotten to this really great status to be prison guards, if they are on par with the invalid white men and then they're injured right they're no longer capable right. so i think there's a lot more work there i would mm -hmm. love to see that um hopefully someone's out there working on it but i found yeah. i was just able to kind of scratch the surface there and i, I look forward to seeing that next project on that it, it definitely is somewhat paradoxical when you think of like how you eventually have combat african-american units 
fighting at things like the crater or Fort yeah. Pillow and then you have this other situation that oh once you get injured you're not really a man anymore I mean, it's, yeah it, 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 well it's that's the Civil War era in many ways, unfortunately. Certainly, uh, yeah, and, and the prevailing ideas of disability and what disability yeah. meant for you in terms of your role in society and what you're capable of, right? Like, and that's a belief that they have about white men, yeah. that, that a disabled white man is really not capable of very much anymore. Sure. So if they already believe that about black bodies, it puts them in an even worse mm -hmm. position. And this plays out too in, in pensions. Mm -hmm. Black soldiers have a much harder time getting pensions mm -hmm. because their bodies are already understood as um, as inferior. And so sometimes when they come and they say, well, I'm disabled because of this war wound, the Pension Bureau says, nah, I think actually yeah. you're disabled because you're black, you know? Yeah. yeah. And so then their, their case is, you know, thrown sure. out or they're given pension at a very low rate or something along those lines. Sure.